Welcome to Location, Location, Location. This week we're at the gateway to the Lake District. Where we're hoping to find Kaz and Rigby a property that will double up as both home and office. One of the issues we have is that we both work from home. It's important if you're doing that that you have to have a reasonable amount of space in the house. Enough space for us both to have an office that we don't end up getting on top of each other the whole time and end up hating each other, which would be counterproductive. At the moment, they live 50 miles apart. Fed up with all the travelling, they've decided to move in together, but it's not going to be easy. At the moment, I live in the middle of town. I don't like to have to get into a car just to get a paper or to go to the pub or go shopping. And at the moment, I live in the middle of a field, really, and I really like living in the middle of a field, and I don't really want to live on a street where you can see people walking past all the time. I don't actually see that many people through my work, so to be stuck in the middle of nowhere and then not see anybody during the day <laughs> might just drive me around the bend, I think. But you'd see me, Rugby. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Kendall's a historic market town on the doorstep of the Lake District National Park. The area's got the best of both worlds, idyllic rural living coupled with fantastic transport links to the major towns of the north, so prices are high. There's a wealth of properties to choose from, from the limestone terraces of the towns to cottages and farm buildings out in the countryside. Lots of choice, but it's a tough brief. Our couple want very different things. Let's see if we can please them both. Nice to meet you. What are your top priorities? We both work from home. We need to have two offices in any house so we don't kill each other. We need to have plenty of space and ideally a big garden with an open outlook. We really like feeling that we're in the country. Well, we've got a top ceiling of 185,000 and that really is the top ceiling. Right, well, we won't find anything standing here, so come on. Cursing nice and to the point, as always. <laughs> We think our first property is a perfect compromise. It's got the rural feel Kaz is after, but is within easy cycling distance of Kendall. The house is one of seven properties recently created from old farm buildings. This barn conversion near Old Hutton has three bedrooms and is on the market at £177,500. It's a very nice size living room, I would say. I really like the beams. I think, yeah. I think that, I mean, they're proper barn beams, aren't they? Yeah. Yes. I think those beams are the original. And definitely With original. With proper nice rusty bolt coming through as well. Which <laughs> I really like, well, actually. Important. It was converted nearly three years ago, and I think it's been done extremely well. It's beautiful condition. Don't think that there's anything that you'd need to do. Maintenance yeah. would be very low. Yeah. yeah. What do you think about the chimney? I think it's a bit monolithic. It might actually be that because the wall's dark, it stands mm. out more. It's nice and rural, but I was thinking that you would be thinking, I was it's, thinking it's far very, too very rural bleak. for me. <laughs> far too rural. <laughs> it's four miles to yes. Kendall. Mm. I mean, I know that cycling to Kendall is really important for you. Is mm. that too far? Um, not necessarily, actually. Um, I think it is this particular valley I find is quite bleak. Now, let's have a look at the kitchen. Oh, it's quite small, isn't it? The problem is that what they've done is they've put this kitchen in this sort of box, essentially, and it makes it seem smaller than it is. The kitchen may be a bit on the small side, but with three bedrooms, the two spare ones can easily be turned into those separate offices they want. This house has numerous charming features, the fireplace, the beams, and also the light fittings. They're all over the place and they're really pretty. But if they go, you're going to have no light and flaming great holes in the ceiling and walls. If you're buying a house like this, double check again and again what's going and what's staying. But at the same time, Phil and I have seen so many deals fall through in fights over these things. Don't lose sight of the real issue. It's the house you want. You can always buy more light fittings. And this is the main bedroom, Rigby. Right, it's a bit small for a main bedroom. If this is the biggest bedroom, then mm. I'm going to have difficulty actually fitting all my stuff in it. Are we on the right track being in a barn conversion? I like the um, exposed beams and some of the features you get in barn conversions, but I'm not necessarily um, convinced about the sort of courtyard effect you've got here. There's a lot mm -hmm. of shared space. Yeah. I mean, if you don't get on with your neighbours, you're really going to know about it. Mm. Well, you've got your view. It's definitely got the view. I really like looking out and having 
Sheep. Sheep, yeah, <laughs> well, I really do. No lack I really of sheep. do. And you've got the beck down there, which is really nice too. Having considered everything, tell us what's in your mind. I think it's too small, really, inside. It's the bedrooms, really, that are the problem. I don't think there's enough working space. We couldn't, to... have, two, we couldn't have two offices here. We'd kill no, each other, wouldn't we? That's it. And the kitchen's very small as well, no. I think, really. It's clearly too small, and yet it's priced 177000 dangerously close to the top of your budget. However, Phil, it's, you know, it's really well done. Yeah. And we don't mind doing a bit of work ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. We could yeah. easily have somewhere that needs far more doing to it than that. That's, that's really ready to walk into, and yeah. that's not really necessarily mm. an issue for us. Good. Yeah. Right, so they are prepared to roll up their sleeves to make their money go further. Bearing that in mind, Fern Cottage has only two bedrooms, but is on the market for 145,000, 40 grand below budget. It's full of the traditional features Kaz and Rigby love, and Phil and I have plans to utilise both their spare money and their willingness to work. Right beside the house are two tempting outbuildings. Now, Rigby, we have to go and check out what's in here, because this might be your future working place. Now, obviously, we've got to insulate this wall, re-roof, introduce more light, but I think it'd make a great office. Mm. And the thing is, there's an added benefit. Hello. Oh. <laughs> we thought this was where Cass could have her office. <laughs> well, it's all right, isn't it? Seriously, is it? I mean, it must be big enough for you, isn't it? Yeah, it would need a little bit of work doing to it, obviously. It's you got can... potential, Phil. More and more people in today's market are looking for a home office, so money spent here is likely to increase the value of the house. We estimated that £3,000 would get a flat and dry floor. These walls would be lined. It needs a new roof, it needs better lighting. It would be great to get some plumbing in here as well. It would be an excellent thing to do and I think would make the house a more saleable asset. I'm through into the living room where there's a beautiful warm fire going. <laughs> That's a really nice fire. It burns really well. It's it fantastic, isn't it? What I didn't know was whether he was going to hit his head on this beam. <laughs> no, well, luckily he's not going to. It's about it's right. Just OK. I really like things like these beams up here. Mm, sort of covered these original shelves. features are original really, features. really nice. lovely, aren't they? All over the house it has these. Yeah. Obviously, somebody's really looked after this house well. It's very old, but it's in lovely condition. Mm. Upstairs, the main bedroom's a good size, and with offices outside, the second bedroom stays a spare room. So what's the verdict? Feels really small. Yeah. You're a tall guy. I'm used to a lot of space. Yeah. I mean, I can even touch the ceiling. It feels <laughs> it feels quite small and claustrophobic to me. Too small. It's really I lovely, but I think, think it's, it, it, it just small, feels yes. too small. Hmm, this isn't going to be easy. Kaz and Rigby want the traditional features of a period cottage, but not the small rooms that come with one. But if it's more space thereafter, our next property's got stacks of it. It's in the village of Naitland, nestling below the hills just three miles from Kendal. It's on a pretty village green, but close enough to town to keep Rigby happy. The house has been refurbished recently and has four bedrooms, a sitting room and a dining room. At £185,000, it's a lot more house for their money. Now, this one's totally different from anything that we've seen so far today. It is, isn't it? Hmm. Ah. House was built in 1923, right. although, as you can see, it's been completely redone very recently. Yes. Much more contemporary feel to it. Mm, certainly. Yes. Its price is 185,000. Mm -hmm. It's also a lot bigger. It's got a more spacious feel to it. The other places have been very cottagey, haven't yeah. they? Yeah. We have to have something that we can both work in and live in, so we need the space. Let's keep on going through and okay. see what you want. Can we it. see the rest of it, yeah? So. You get a bigger sense of proportion in this house altogether. I mean, I do sort of like houses that have got some amount of sort of original features. I think one thing that worries me a little bit is the fact that all the um, doors and architraves are all new wood. With most properties, there's a trade-off. Here, extra space comes at the cost of the traditional features Kaz and Rigby like. But what they gain is three double bedrooms and a fourth master bedroom up in the attic. Now, although this is currently used as the main bedroom, because it has an ensuite, it may not actually be the biggest bedroom. But the point is, Rigby, if you sat up in that bed, you'd crack your head off I on the ceiling. would. <laughs> I think, yes. I don't like it at all. <laughs> I really don't. I, I would imagine. <laughs> but a staircase in the middle of your bedroom, I really don't. I mean, it might suit somebody, but I really don't like it at all. I don't like this space. 
I wouldn't even want it as my office, really. I don't like the way that lots of the lighting's been put in. It's a lovely house for somebody, but it's really not me at all, and I know that I wouldn't buy this house, so... Yeah. This is a great house. It's four bedrooms, two bathrooms, big kitchen, in, in budget, village location, close to Kendall. I think it's the best thing we've seen all day. It's what comes closest to our um, specification, I think. But we're unhappy about some of the way it's been uh, modernised. At some point today, you did say to us that you wanted to, to renovate and were happy to redecorate and do mm -hmm, all the work. Mm -hmm. So I think it's the wrong thing to come in mm. and, and um, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. be upset about the lighting and the decoration. It's a very common problem, this. If something is a complete wreck, limestone walls, old lino floors, people can absolutely see that it needs renovating and they can make it theirs. But if somebody else has modernised something in a way that people don't like, they don't think I can add value because they're assuming that you can't add value and that anything you do will involve wrecking what's there and spending money. That's not always the case. <laughs>